Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about closed doors. I'm sure many of us have heard the saying, if God closes one door, he'll open another. So that's kind of the topic that we're going to be talking about today. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos every Tuesday at 2. So there's a couple of reasons why God closes doors. One reason could be is to redirect us. To redirect us towards the purpose that God has written out for our lives. And where do I pull this from? I pull this from the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, I feel like, is a whole book of just closed doors. One big, fat, closed door. So basically, God called Jonah to go to Nineveh. And Jonah was like, I don't want to go to Nineveh, so I'm going to hop on a boat and go the opposite way to Tarshish. And... God was like, mm -mm, no. And then what happened was God sent this storm and the boat was going crazy. And then that storm was to indicate that Jonah needed to go back the other way, back to Nineveh. So the people on the boat threw him off because they figured out that he was the one who was causing this big old storm. And then this great big fish. Oftentimes we know Jonah and the whale, but scripture never says whale. It just says great fish or big fish or something. Let's see exactly what it says. It's Jonah 117. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So just a little side note here. I thought this was really interesting regarding the fish. So fish is not limited to what is called fish today. Generally cold blooded vertebrae sea creatures with fins and gills but is a general word for an aquatic beast which cannot be identified further. However, a large whale such as a sperm whale could easily swallow a man whole. So that's where the whole Jonah and the whale came from. But just a little note for you guys, it just says great fish, but that's why they usually think it's a whale. So besides the point, and then the great fish vomited Jonah on the land and God was like, I need you to go to Nineveh. So he picked himself up and went to Nineveh. And then Jonah spoke to the Ninevites and then they repented. And that's basically the story. I'm also going to put a link in the description box below that goes through the story of Jonah. It's done by the Bible Project. I highly recommend it to understand the book more thoroughly. But that's really the book of Jonah. So we can see just from that paraphrase, God had one direction for Jonah to go in. Just one. There were no other open doors. The only open door was to Nineveh, not to wherever he wanted to go, not to Tarshish. So God redirected Jonah and he could be redirecting you. So if you find yourself like Jonah trying to bust open those closed doors, trying to bang on those closed doors, trying to do whatever you can to open them, don't waste your time, don't waste your energy. And Jonah, I would imagine, had to pay some money to get on that boat. So we can see if we don't follow God's will for our lives, if we try to go opposite of what God wants, we'll waste time, we'll waste energy, and we really could be wasting money. There's a song by Elevation Worship called I Can't Believe. I'm gonna put that in the description box below. And if you are having a hard time like Jonah was, I want to encourage you to listen to the song to realign your will with his. The chorus goes, I can't believe the price you paid for me, what you did not owe so that I could know you. How can it be you chose someone like me to declare your praise for the glory of your name? So when I heard that chorus, I literally started crying because the whole thing, literally, I can't believe you chose someone like me to declare your praise. Like, that's an honor. So just kind of sing it to yourself and listen to it and just have that heart shift, have that change, man. It's really such an honor. People search so hard for the purpose. And the fact that you have closed doors, that is a blessing. Okay, the second reason there could be closed doors in your lives is because you're not relying on God anymore. You're distracted by earthly things. You're becoming prideful, thinking that you attained all that you have on your own. 
And where am I pulling this from? I'm pulling this from Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Let's go ahead and read it. It's titled The Tower of Babel. Let's start at verse 1. It says, Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and butem for mortar. Then they said, Come, let's build ourselves a city and a tower with its top to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. So from the story, we can pull that God closes doors because we no longer rely on him. We can see that in verses two through four, it really emphasizes human independence and self-sufficiency apart from God. These people started thinking they attained all this stuff on their own, but what they didn't understand was, let's go to James 1, 17, where it says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And even in the story, we can see redirection as we did in the first story when we talked about Jonah. God was redirecting for his plan to happen. In verse 4, we see they built the tower in order not to be dispersed over the whole earth. But that goes against God's command that he gave in Genesis 1, 22 and 28, Genesis 9, 1 and Genesis 9, 7. We see in those verses... God had planned for the people to fill the earth. And these people were going against that. Basing it off of this story, one reason that doors could be closing is because of pride. In verse 4, we see that they wanted to make a name for themselves. So their desire was to be praised. So when God protects us against pride or self-praise, it's really for our own protection. So God could be closing doors too for our own protection. The third reason could be is you're just not ready. You're just not ready to walk through that door. It's just not the season. Let's look at Ecclesiastes 3 starting at verse 1. It's titled A Time for Everything. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. So we can see there is a time and a season for everything under the sun. So if there is a closed door, it doesn't mean that it's closed forever, okay? It just might mean that you're just not ready to walk through it right now. For example, let's take the example of marriage. I wasn't ready to get married at 15, but I am now at 26. So that season of marriage was not for me at 15, but it is now here at 26. You guys, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7 through 13, it talks about open and closed doors. I just want to read verse 7. It says, And the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, The words of the Holy One, the true one, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, who shuts and no one opens. I want to read to you guys a part of an article that I found regarding the scripture. It says, In this scripture, the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David, refers to Christ. In this scripture, God wanted to make it clear that Jesus has the ability to open doors no one can shut and close doors no man can open. Jesus holds the keys and whatever he opens and closes is simply the action of fulfilling the will of the Father. So I want to get kind of personal with you guys and share 
the closed door story in my life. So it started happening my last year of college. I was trying to get an internship in a co-op so I could graduate and I just could not get a job for the life of me. I didn't know what was going on. I never really had a hard time getting a job. So I was like, God, what is going on? And eventually I just really felt this tug to work at my home church. And not gonna lie, I was a little bit like Jonah. I was like, let me go try this church, this church, that church. And all those doors were closed, but I ended up calling my home church and I was like, I need an internship co-op for my undergrad. And they were like, oh, okay, what are you interested in? And I was like, the arts or women's ministry. And they were like, okay, let's see what we can do. So I got a call back and they were like, well, we don't really have an opening, but we're going to make one for you. So that just goes to show that the doors that God has closed, that they're going to be closed and that he can make a way out of no way. There was no opening, but they made one for me. And God put me there. He closed all the other doors and God put me just in that one open door where he wanted me. One, that was my training to have this women's ministry. And two, that's where I met my fiance. So really closed doors are a blessing. And I know closed doors can be hard. I really, really get that. I've experienced many closed doors. I feel like it's like a very popular phenomenon in my life. And I did this Instagram post where I was kind of struggling one morning. I just woke up and I was like done fighting. The post said, Proverbs 16, 9 said, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. And this is what I wrote regarding that scripture. I said, What happens when the dreams you had for yourself are not your reality? Are you someone who never thought you would be where you are today? I can answer yes to all those questions, but that is okay because even though we made our plans, even though we had our own dreams, even though we had a timeline, the Lord determines our steps. What we had for ourselves may not have been God's plan for our lives. What we had for ourselves may have been closed because it would have led us to a dead end. What we had for ourselves may have been removed for our own protection because God will wreck your plans when he sees your plans are about to wreck you. So be encouraged this morning. I wrote this in the morning. So be encouraged this morning. God has dreams for you that you could never even dream up for yourself. He is a good, good father. Trust him. Not sure what steps to take or where to go or where your steps are leading you? Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 has your answer. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Friends, be blessed as you walk his course. I'll put that link to that Instagram post down in the description box below. I actually have a lot of closed doors in my life right now and I'm very aware of them and I'm thankful for them and I'm not trying to like knock them down anymore and try to pry them open because like Jonah, I'm just wasting my time. I'm just wasting my energy. We also have a hard time with closed doors because we don't fully trust God. We don't fully trust that he's faithful. We begin to fear and something super cool is that the Bible actually says, do not fear 365 times, which is one time for every day of the year. I don't think that was by accident. Just saying. You'll begin to know and you'll begin to appreciate those closed doors in your lives because with them you'll begin to have this relaxed confidence about you where you'll begin to know that what's mine is mine, what God has for me is for me and it can't be taken away from me. So begin to have this relaxed confidence because then we will truly trust the Lord and we won't be jumping at every opportunity that comes our way because we'll have focus. We'll know where to go and what God has written for us. You'll know your lane and you'll stick to it. But that's all I have for us today you guys. If you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I upload every Tuesday at 2 and as always you guys don't forget to take time to spend time in the beautiful word. I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Thank you.